Hello and welcome to Alma, Missouri. This is episode 45. Can you believe it? In any event, we uh, do lots of bits and pieces. Mainly we bring in some grass. Quite an interesting little development at the end of the um, grass harvest, if you want to call it that. Mowing the lawns. <laughs> in any event. And we upgrade quite a few pieces of equipment. We sell some of our productions from town. Well, we've got a lot of liming to be done, so let's get on with that. I think uh, we've finished just finishing off the bottom field, and then we've got all the fields that we've harvested earlier on in the last couple of episodes to be done as well. And then I'm going to plant lots of canola to keep our oil production up um, so that we can keep up with the production of mayonnaise and now also the chip factory which I think is probably going to take quite a bit of oil but yeah so we'll get this all lined up and I think we'll plant all the all the fields that are that we harvested in the last few episodes with canola as I said and then the big field that had potatoes in we'll put we'll put to wheat or barley one of the two so that we can uh, keep up with our chicken feed production and our flour production which is uh, interesting to see how much we get how much wheat or barley we get off that field it's nice and big uh, I think that's going to be one of our main aims is to balance the production of oil and um, well inputs for flour and and chicken feed to keep those going. The big grass field is quite sufficient but at present to keep our um, our cows and sheep. Uh, in food. I think this is going to be one of the machines that we need to upgrade is the lime spreader. Um, it spreads a good nice width but it's only got about a 10,000 litre capacity which is not bad for something trailed behind a tractor. In any case we'll drop that off here for now and we'll make a decision on that in a, a little while may not be shown but um, we will be upgrading that piece of equipment this is our oldest piece of machinery not in terms of years worked as such but um, it's just the oldest model and um, I'm reluctant to sell it it's nice to have a bit of old nostal nostalgic equipment on the farm and it's doing okay it's just not very quick so I don't think we will get rid of that at the moment it's probably will at some time right let's get the cedar hooked up and we'll get that started on this field and then we'll move on to another task once we start in the very near future starting to get the big grass field mowed and worked on uh, it didn't quite finish off there it's all right we'll be able to we'll be able to just plant over it right let's get this onto a worker we'll do some course play on it get it all nice and operating so that we can go and do some other work. We're going to be, have to be using cosplay extensively, which we have been already, um, just to keep up with the size of the farm that we are at the moment. So uh, as we go forward, um, we'll almost probably be doing weekly episodes now of, um, of Alma, Missouri, and they'll be basically recaps of what we have done during the course of the week 
just because there are so many different jobs to be done. A lot of them are routine and we'll just have to go back and visit some of them. Uh, there are still a couple of things that we need to do or want to do. We want to make sure that our chip production is up and running properly. And um, I want to at least take off another crop off the big field. So there's a little way still to go in the series. Mainly I'm enjoying this map so much. Um, I don't often, to be, to be fair, play on big American maps, but I've enjoyed this one because it's it's got a lot of variety and um, some people do take a or oh, some people have uh, tarred all American maps with uh, just being big and square fields and this is anything but any event that's not a, a serious problem so let's get the mower up and running going to take a lot of grass off there. I think all of the grass we're going to do is we're going to put into into our silage producing or what, what, what do I want to do? Production I suppose you want to call it that but it's a, really a silo. So um, yeah so we're going to get that cut first. It's a, it's a big area. It does take a while. So we're using the uh, the big John Deere for this for this job. We've got the uh, old trusty work workhorse that will be doing quite a bit of work as well, and we will need to consider quite soon getting a a third a third big well when I say a third so it's going to be a fourth tractor overall. So we'll have the old John Deere, we'll have the workhorse John Deere, then we'll have the, I think it was the R8, yeah, R8 John Deere, and then we'll look for something that is a little bit bigger than that, a little bit of a, a little bit of a powerhouse. I mean, the R8 is pretty powerful, but uh, I think uh, we're going to look for something the top of, top of the range of power, of horsepower, and we'll see how it goes. Right, we'll put this onto course play. Well, let's set them off, and we can go and do some other bits and pieces. It's probably going to take a while. Um, this cross cutting system also probably needs to be looked at in terms of our upgrade policy at the moment we've got a reasonable amount of money but um, considering that we're looking to buy a big tractor as well it's probably going to have to go and sell some product productions well they need to be sold in any event so let's hook up the trailer and I think we'll head into town there must be quite a bit of quite a bit of stuff Quite a bit of productions in town. We'll go and collect what's there, we'll sell it, see where we stand money-wise after that lot, and uh, make some upgrades and purchases. Off we go to town. So I've got my eye on these fields across the road now. Don't have time to, well, don't have money. I want to do the upgrade of the equipment first and then we'll have a look at at uh, buying those, say, the stuff for a pedestrian there. we in town in any event, so let's go and have a look and pick up some pizza and get that into the diner so that they can sell it for us or so they can buy it from us and they can sell it for them for themselves uh, the pizzeria has been is just chugging along it's pretty much at full production I think in the next episode we'll have to one of the main jobs of the next episode will be to look to um, 
to maintaining our production units, making sure that they fall, making sure that they're getting the right sort of stock, because I know we've stop producing tomato sauce at the moment just because or ketchup just because we had such an oversupply and um, yeah we were getting good prices for our tomatoes in our farm shop but we'll have to have a look at that because I think the pizzeria will start needing top-ups of all the inputs ketchup cheese and pineapple I think we also had whether we keep on with pineapples uh, I'm not sure though in any case it's a nice little bit of income there from that 41 odd grand 42 grand nice not to be scoffed at I suppose <laughs> there we go anyway let's go and have a look and see how much mayonnaise we've got to be sold let's creep over there Train line. Let's try to be hit by a train. <laughs> oh dear. Missed a couple of gears there, I think. Right, well, there's nice five boxes of mayonnaise. Right, now I can see that there's quite a bit of stuff at the at the dairy so we'll nip on down there and go and pick that up I think this will all go into our farm shop operation and as I said in the next episode we'll start looking at our productions go through all our productions be a good good way of re recapping on what our productions are we're getting quite quite big with regard to our production capabilities over and above our farming exploits here we go full up we've got some nice nice profit making product to sell A little farm shop operation is starting to look quite good looks but bit more like a farmer's market of course because of the different of the of the mayonnaise tent that we put up as well but uh, that's exactly the way we want it we don't want it to look like a supermarket that's for sure let's get the straps off and get all this sold and see how much we get I think it'll be a reasonable amount of money We've cleared most of the productions that we did on the farm earlier on in an earlier episodes, so we won't worry about that now. Just get this all all done. Of course the mayonnaise always brings in some good profit. Well as does everything else, the cheese I said in the next episode we'll have to must probably put the cheese back into the pizzeria stop taking profit <laughs> well we do get profit from the pizzas but we have quite a good outlet and we seem to be getting quite a bit of uh, public interest in buying directly from the farm so as long as we get good prices here we'll keep on supplying them no better than retailing ourselves always the best place to make profit self retail sell it yourself if you can right that's a really decent amount of money so we're over 600,000 I think we can start making some purchases let's go and get the trailer parked off first probably got to feed uh, our cows but we'll do that off camera we've got quite a good store of um, stock of clothing coming up uh, now um, it's probably still quite a few months I think it's April when uh, the best selling price is for clothing and we seem to have a lot of it I don't know whether I missed a top of the top of the mark 
best price sale for our clothing. I've got to try and remember to do that in March or April, somewhere around there. But yeah, that will bring in some really good money when we do that. Let's get that parked up. And I think it's time to look for the beasts. It's going to be this fence. We're going to go maximum horsepower 517 horsepower i think we can do on it i don't really get to look at some of the others but this is uh, this is the one i want full horsepower that's what we want 517 horses tires put white tires and weights on it's for normal We'll put all the bells and whistles on that we can, so we'll put the Iceria Pro Compact on so that when we're plying we can... Oh, I don't like the... I don't like the license plate. We're going to have to change this one. So we'll... Uh, we'll change it to something fairly random number-wise. And then we'll put our farm name on there. Uh, NJ in we'll put it we'll put it down as that and we'll uh, we'll be quite happy with that <laughs> nay here we go I don't often change the number of plates it's quite nice now and again but there we go so that's a good chunk of the income that we've just made spent or about to be spent it's looking good nice chunky I like the fact that it's it's a big big tractor but it's not it's fairly compact for its size and its power right we're still having our worker plow the fields but this is the next upgrade that we're going to do let's get this all back I'm going to go and and change our our plowing system it's just taking too long I don't know if you noticed there but sometimes the power is just with well on the course play it seemed to be not plowing uh, mowing with sometimes just the front mower and sometimes just the, the back mower and it just took ages and ages um, luckily I was busy with other stuff so I didn't quite n you know notice it until I said to myself well, why is this thing still mowing but it's just not effective and if well, it's effective enough it cuts well but it's not efficient so I have my my thoughts on that and we're going to put on a fixed mower well, when I say fixed mower, it's, um, it doesn't require front and back mowers to get a reasonable width out of it, and I think that should sort that problem out on that field. It is an unusually shaped field, so um, so I can quite understand why course play does what it does when it when it um, establishes a route for that field. But yeah, we need to upgrade. We need something more efficient. Get those sold. Get a little bit of money back when they're quite old pieces, so we're not going to get a lot of money back for that. And we're going to go and get... Where is it now? Mowers. There they are there. We go that's it found and I know you know what I want there we go the ELHO it's quite an expensive bit of kit oh, 
I've always kind of fancied that one, but it's front and back again. Yeah, the ELHO is the one that I want. It's the one that I want. Here we go. 7.3 meter width, so it's not bad. It moves it up 30 miles an hour when it's plowing. Not plowing. Yeah. I get these things in my head. And then I just, they just don't want to go away. <laughs> when I'm mowing. I think the, the R8 will handle it quite easily. It doesn't need to be unfolded when it's uh, unhitched. Ooh, is it a little bit heavy there, or was it just me? It was probably just me. Seems to be doing okay. It's going to give it a little, little try out. See how it goes. There's not much left to do though, but uh, give it a go, and then we'll. Uh, We'll have it for the future mowings. Make short work of that little grass field we've got in the front. Might need to reconsider what we're doing with that. We're getting enough grass here and it grows quick enough that we can take a couple of cuts off every year as we look after it. You get it raked up after, the, after, after use. I don't think we'll get to that in this episode. It's probably be one of the offline jobs. A bit of grass care. I'm just keeping this first um, this first run at um, at the same sort of width so that we can eventually get it back onto course play. Actually, I might just finish this off myself, but we won't show it to you at all. Just enjoying doing, doing a bit of mowing again. <laughs> I've got the windrow ready to go. I want to put that into course play, so that's why I haven't got it started yet. But I don't mind doing these, um, generally speaking, on um, on cosplay and off camera. It's something we've done quite often, and we will always revisit it. Mm, so nice, nice boxes of chips and French fries. But that's uh, for tomorrow. Oh next month should I say delivery right that's that all done quite happy with this new bit of machinery I think that's going to make quite a bit of difference to our grass operation of course in an earlier episode we did upgrade the um, the windrower we're not going to tear this we can put grass straight into the silage silo or the silage production silo we are we're not running out of silage but um, it is always been a bit of a touch and go thing as we were s separating or, or, or doing um, hay and silage at the same time we'll get that filled up nicely and then we'll uh, deal with some some hay in the next cut because we've always got a bit of problem with storage of hay and well not a problem but um, yeah we this whole field will be will produce too much hay to be stored in the one in the bale storage that we do have at present it's probably something we'll have to look at as we go along as the um, numbers of the cows grow but we'll deal with that as it happens 
Right, let's get the window sorted out, get it working, and then we can collect the the grass at a bit of a later stage. Yep, that's as you can see. It's uh, because of the width of that of that window. There's not many passes that need to be made. So I normally just start it from the inside and then finish it off with the headland in, the, in this case. This is going to be a really short start in the event. There it is, it's off, off and running. We'll leave that be. Let it get on to do it, do its job. It's probably not going to take too long because of the, as I said, very few passes. Maybe I should have done two headlands, but in any event, let's park up the mower now. I can hitch up the. Well, I think I've got it out there already. I think I've got the, yeah, the forage harvester. Or the forage pickup forage trailer whatever you want to call it uh, I think I've got that out on the field already ready, ready for us to go Eggs we've done, yeah, we have done that today. We've collected, yeah, we've collected that, so that's all up and running. These episodes take so long to get to get done now, so we'll just park up there for now. How's that doing? That's doing all right. rapid pace start collecting some of the of the grass and we'll get going get it into the silo this fence is probably overpowered for this for this job but once we get to my next big purchase which uh, will be replacing the cedar it will uh, it'll make more sense I'm not sure whether we'll replace the old cedar I think we'll keep it got a couple of the smaller fields that, that it can work on and because I think we're going to be limiting ourselves to a few well it's not so much that we'll only be doing a few a few um, crops but we will be doing large swathes of the same crop at a time and sometimes it'll help to to have a big uh, a small cedar so this is the new liming machine we bought we did finish off liming all our fields big amazon it takes about i said amazon in any case it takes about uh, eighteen thousand liters so nearly double what we had on the other one spreads to a reasonable width just seems to go a lot quicker so there we go that's the new cedar we bought and I was going to plant maize in there but of course it's not the right, 
we have to wait for next month to part mains. So I'm going to go over to the bottom field and I'm going to plant some more canola, which we can do at the moment. And next month we'll get back to this field and plant up the either maize or barley. I think we'll probably stick with maize. Let's just make sure we got that onto canola while I'm talking about it, otherwise we'll get there and wonder what's happening. We'll come back. finish off all the uh, the collection of the grass so we've got canola in that field we've already done that one with a smaller cedar and we'll get this This all set up here. Now there's a bit of seed still left down there. We'll add it in. That's from the from the last job, from the last field. I think it should all fit in here. Yeah? Don't think there was a lot in there. No, there wasn't. But waste not, want not, as they say. Of course, we've got all the sugar beets still to be done. And I think the, I think we have got some soya beans. I think we've got some beans to do as well. Let's get this all put onto a onto course play so that it it can get working and we can get back and start picking up the grass or continue to pick up the grass. Yeah, it's that bottom field there. That's the right one. Always have to keep checking the shapes because we changed the size and the shapes of the fields when we was in the episodes where I was rejigging this area to um, create the grass patch so sometimes it does get a little bit tricky you have to kind of make sure that you're parked in the right area when you set up course play for the, for the way I've done it at the moment but it's I think I can do all fields as I say sometimes I just have to jiggle it a little bit just to where I start just to get the right shape because sometimes particularly in this field it takes off the the corner uh, the bottom left hand corner but it's uh, sorted it out this time without a problem it's just one of those little things that you have to take care of all the time not a real problem There we go, all sorted, and away she goes. We'll do this on a bit of a, we'll do the first, uh, the first cut, or the first load, just about full, just to show you where it's going, and then you'll jump cut towards the end and a couple of little interesting movements now you might notice that um, we started at the beginning of this field again had a bit of a crash of OBS and uh, yeah so we lost a little bit of the, um, the beginning of this harvest but we've managed to recover again so yeah I haven't been having a lot of joy with the technical aspects of late but not too much damage done so I just had to restart this field restart a couple of other things and that's why we 
That's the position we are now. But it's all good now. All good. So as I said, we're going to be putting this into the silage producing silo. And we collected a lot of grass. A lot, a lot of grass. So we've got these three swaths still to collect. We'll get that up to the silo. The field to the left has already been planted with the canola. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see how um, how much we um, start making out of the potato factory. It was a big harvest, that. Still got that grass, it looks like it's about ready to be cut. But I think we'll have enough, enough grass for now. So I say maybe we to start looking at it. it's not very oh we're full by the looks of things it's a good check yeah 479,970 liters of grass in there to be made into silage right so what do we do with extra grass now I think, I suppose we could sell it, but I'm probably not going to get a lot of money for it. I think what I'll do is I'll put it into the sheep. Because we don't have to put bales into the sheep. We can not put loose grass in. I think we just fill it up in front of this door. If I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. We'll put that in there. Not much in there, so we'll take another load off. We'll top up the silo and then uh, see how much more we'll fill up the sheep production first of all and then I'm not sure how much it will take. I don't think it'll take all this grass that we've still got to use so we'll have to come up with another solution for that. We'll probably have to start baling. We can bale the grass and we'll put that into storage. I think we've got enough storage for that. Just top this up quickly. It's probably not going to take much. No, it didn't take much at all. It's probably a waste of diesel. We'll get this into the sheep pen. I hope it can take a reasonable amount of it. I'm not sure. I suppose I could get out and check, but let's just see what happens. Create a bit of jeopardy. How much are we going to put, a, put into there? Where's the trigger point now? I found it so easy the first time. Oh, there we go. That's a reasonable amount going in. Quite happy with that. So that must be full, so we've got a little bit left. Let's make sure it's full. Yep, I think it's full. Right. So are we going to sell the rest of the grass or are we going to put it into the storage? sell it really no I'm not gonna sell it can't sell it in any event in this format <laughs> so that that takes care of that <laughs> oh dear 
my thinking was we've got all the swaths down there is that we'll put that into bales we'll just sell this little bit that's loose but we'll get we'll go and dump this on the grass and uh, and bale it up so we've still got two full swaths there Offload this year, we should be able to bail it up off the cross, off the ground. Just try and spread it out as much as we can. It's a big swath. <laughs> I don't know whether, <laughs> whether the bail is going to like that too much, but <laughs> it'll be okay. It'll be okay on the day, as they say. Let's go and park this up and hook up the baler. A trusty old John Deere baler still doing work that's not going to be upgraded anywhere soon. There's nothing that can do a better job than that at the moment, in my opinion. There's a Foss baler, but uh, yeah, I don't want to use that in this series. We might do it in this. It's actually one of, the, one of the pieces of sort of uh, unusual piece of equipment that I haven't used in any of my series I think is the FOSS baler. Must have a look at that at some stage. Park this up, keep it all nice and tidy. Should have taken it for a wash first. I'll have to look at that somewhere. Sometime. Baler's also looking a bit dirty. Even, even though as I said the fence is a big beast with a smallish fo footprint, it's still quite a big footprint. So, uh, yeah, sporting our nice number plate. good in cab as well I like it John Deere guys weren't too happy when I went for Fent but uh, they don't have they didn't have what I wanted <laughs> oh dear it's green <laughs> we've kept with the color theme uh, I'm not sure that uh, that really cuts the mustard, that logic. Just wanted a big, strong tractor. And I didn't want a um, articulated tractor. For some reason I just don't like articulated tractors. Don't know why. I know they've got better turning circles and bigger better with the bigger the bigger planters or uh, well, the bigger cedars but uh, yeah I prefer this this one when I'm looking for, for my power it's also one of my favorite mods was it is this a mod I'm not sure I don't think so it's one of my favorite tractors let's put it that way That's done a pretty easy job of that. Once I've got it all sorted out, <laughs> I'm sure you know, just then went up and down there. First time I didn't have the uh, the pickup down. No, first I had the pickup down and I didn't switch it on. And I switched it on, but somehow the pickup then was lifted. <laughs> In any case, I eventually got it done. Right. We should get a. Oh, I, I would suppose 18 or 19 bales out of that lot because we, we use a very big uh, windrow now, so you get a lot of uh, a, a lot of grass collected. The swaths are pretty big. And I'm pleased to say this um, this old baler handles it with uh, a plum. 
I have no problem with it whatsoever. My drone going through the bushes again. <laughs> oh dear. I'll just pick up these bits and pieces. Yeah, as you can see, we're dropping bales quite at quite regular intervals. Just glancing to the left, we probably need to have a look sometime soon at the slurry situation. I don't know whether we'll get another bale out of this. I think I'm spending a lot of time now chasing another bale, but I don't think we're going to get another bale out of this. Let's just tidy up a bit. But it's probably time to go and get the uh, the autoload out. these last couple of pieces. I'm not going to go and chasing all over the field, the other corners. It's just not worth the time. This is just kind of on the way back to the to the implement area, to the farm area. Let's get these unloaded. Right, just got a, just about a full load. And I think we've got about another full. Now we'll get this one in. One more. We'll go and put these into the into the bale shed. We say for um, for sheep feed. 14, yeah, 18 ish bales. Quite happy with that out of that lot. So we still got a bit of a bit of a spread of product off that field. We know pretty much we can from that one field we can fill up the silage pr uh, production silo, which is good to know. So we can keep our eye on that, let it run down. Just make sure that we've got grass to cut there. And uh, we can definitely fill that up. We can manage our, our hay and, um, and grass bales for, for mixing the TMR and feed for the sheep in the bale shed so that's also okay so that's quite fine just remember to move the cotton that I can see over there um, before we sign off this month otherwise we we end up with uh, full production and not being able to uh, store wool when we sleep got to get on top of that operation got to remember to put some wool into the clothing factory before we close off most evenings or mo most months should I say does it tend to be a, a day you're using one day at uh, real time and then sleeping when we need to so I think there's a couple I think three of four bales still to collect. I think one of the bales is uh, is not the right size. I think it's the one to the left there. It was probably the first one that came out the baler when we started baling. So what we'll do is we'll just be a little bit creative here. Nice little trick that I do is I just push it all back 
do that by pretending to unload and then don't unload. You can't do this too far away from wherever you're going to be unloading because when you abort the unload the, um, it doesn't seem to pick up the gatherer. And we'll just jump out and we'll manually load the bale onto that. And then I think this we'll just put straight into the into the sheep pen. Just build build up a bit of stock around the sheep pen so it'll auto feed it while we are sleeping. Get the old trusty uh, strong man stuff so, <laughs> so we can get the bales on. Hopefully it'll stay on there for the short little trip up to up to the sheep pen. Should do. Don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Ah. It does happen every now and again. Forget to switch it off so that you end up trying to move the tractor. Yep, no problem, it stayed on. Didn't think of it really full off, so let's get this off loaded here and uh, we'll put those around the feeder so it can auto feed and make sure that our sheep are happy when it comes to their food. Once we finish that, we'll go and finish, uh, feed the, the cows, water the get some water into the other to our new um, free-range cow pens we'll do that all off camera we won't bore you with that at this point in time right let's manhandle these into into there and I think that's pretty much where we're going to end this episode so the main just for this episode was to upgrade a lot of the machinery, get the grass done. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> we just, just stack all this grass around, around here, keep it up to date. If you've enjoyed this episode, or if you, and particularly if you're enjoying this series, please like and subscribe. It does help us out. Yep, this creating a little bit of problems there <laughs> not sure why but we'll get it all sorted out in any event we'll finish off putting that around the feeder thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed it as I said please do like and subscribe it does help me out and we'll catch you in the next one cheerio